Welcome students. We now begin with the second part of our study of plantation. I will take you to the board so that we have a quick recap. In the first part of plant tissues, we studied meristematic tissues in detail. Their cells are capable of cell division or they are dividing cells or the cells divide. The second category of plant tissue was permanent tissues non-dividing cells or the cells do not divide that is because they have a definite shape they have a definite size and they have a specific or permanent function so they cannot divide otherwise they will lose their function in permanent tissue we studied the protective tissue in detail we then went to three types of supportive tissues parenchyma, cholenchyma, sclerenchyma we now begin the study of the last part of the permanent tissue called conducting tissue because the tissue is used to transport water and food. Next, therefore it is also called as vascular tissue because it is going to be made up of vessels as you will see and because it is made up of more than one type of tissue it is also known as complex tissue. We now begin the study of the first conducting tissue known as xylem. As I draw, I will take you to the path. So now, where is the xylem present? It is present in the pit of a plant. The pit is the central part. So if this is the plant, then this is where the xylem is. This is where the xylem is. So the xylem is located in the center known as the pit. The center of the plant. The outer part is known as bark. The inner one is known as pit. And this is where the xylem is located. What is the function of xylem? The function of xylem is upward conduction of minerals and water from the root to the other parts of a plant. So I am now drawing the first one. I am drawing the trachea, which is in the center. This then is the trachea. It is made up of cells which are forming a continuous tube. This then is the trachea which is in the center. The vessel is like a capillary. Therefore, it has its walls lined by a protein. So the walls are lined by a protein. And the protein is known as lignin. Therefore, the walls of the trachea are lignified. Next, next. So, what is the function? I am drawing the diagram of a xylem. Upward conduction, pay attention. Upward, upward conduction. of water and minerals to all other parts of a plant from roots from the root to other parts parts of the plant so you can see upward the central one being tracky the lignin Strengthens the wall, therefore the tracheids are lignified. So I am writing now, the tracheid is lignified. Next to it, you have a vessel called trachea. So next to it is a vessel called trachea. The trachea also has a forms a continuous tube for upward conduction of water from the root to other parts of the plant. The second part is known as the trachea. Its walls are also lignified. The walls are lignified. Therefore, the xylem made up of tracheids and trachea, collectively known as tracheary vessels. So we begin again. The function of xylem is upward conduction of water and minerals from the root to other parts of the plant. The place where the xylem is located is in the pit, the central part 
of the plant. The outer part being the bulb. Next, it is made up of the first tube-like vessel known as trachea. The wall of the trachea contain lignin. You can see I have marked this lignin. Hence the walls are lignified to give it mechanical strength. Next to it, you have a vessel called trachea. Trachea that also helps in upward conduction of water whose walls are also lignified. Collectively, the trachea and the trachea are known as tracheal elements. Next, as a supportive tissue on either side, as a supportive tissue, you have xylem parenchyma. So you have the xylem parenchyma. We studied in the supportive tissue. Xylem parenchyma, parenchyma cells. It is the only living part of the xylem because you can see the walls are not lignified. And next to it, you have the xylem fibers. So the last part, outermost, is the xylem fiber made up of sclerenchyma. Again, we studied in the first part. So that takes care of the vessel. So I am quickly drawing it for you and I am giving you the commentary also at the same time. So we begin with the study of xylem, a uh, vessel for upward conduction of water and minerals from the root to other parts of the plant. The central channel then is known as a trachea, a tubular structure whose walls are lignified, has got lignified walls. So I am drawing the lignified Walls. The walls are lignified. Next to the trachea, we have a vessel called trachea. I'm drawing in a different color. I'm drawing in a different color. So this then is the trachea or trachea. Trachea, whose walls are also lignified. Why should the walls be lignified? Because they are very delicate, capillary like, so they should not collapse to give mechanical strength. Water is moving up. The two collectively are known as tracheal elements. As a supportive tissue, around it you have parenchyma cells. These then are the parenchyma cells, known as xylem parenchyma. The third structure in the xylem vessel and next to it the last one on either side you have these fibers whose walls are also lignified remember their walls are also lignified we studied this supportive tissue known as xylem fibers and it is made up of sclerenchyma this then is the structure of the xylem. Next, you, can, you know now that the xylem conducts upward water and minerals. And it is possible because this capillary tube, it can get blocked. So now you can see the xylem vessel has got blocked. Until the new vessels are formed, this vessel is blocked. The new vessels are formed by the meristematic tissue. So now you can see here that the xylem has become blocked because of deposition of minerals which it was conducting. Not only it has become blocked, but it has also become hard. When the carpenter uses this part of the plant by scraping off the xylem fibers and parent, <coughs> xylem parenchyma, he reaches the part of the xylem which is block can become hard and he uses it to make furniture. Furniture is made from wood. Therefore in Greek, xylo means wood. So what is wood? That part of the xylo which has become blocked hard and no more conducts water. It no more conducts water. So the question is then will the plant die? The plant won't die. That is because the meristematic tissue is an undifferentiated tissue. What does undifferentiated mean? It has by itself, it has no permanent function. It 
only goes on dividing to replace cells like the dead parenchyma cells or the sclerenchyma cells, all other parts of the plant, the meristematic tissue replaces. Therefore, meristematic tissue is the most undifferentiated. All other tissues like protective, supportive, conductive are differentiated tissue. Differentiated means uh, tissue with a function. Okay. So, main the most undifferentiated tissue, meristematic tissue. So, when the xylem becomes blocked, hard and no more conducts water, the meristematic tissue forms a new xylem vessel. Okay. Next, I will now take you to a very important <clears throat> study. If you see a tree and if you cut, so now I've cut, so on top you must have noticed there are rings. These rings are formed every year, therefore called annular rings. These are going on being formed. As the old ones get blocked, new ones start forming. These annular rings are of xylem. And the interesting part is they tell you the age of the tree. So if you count the xylem rings, which are nothing but xylem vessels, it will tell you the age of the tree. So that takes care of the study of xylem, a conducting tissue for water and minerals from the root to the upper part. We now go and study the next one. The next one is phloem. The phloem is also made up of four parts. First one known as a sieve tube. Next to it, I will teach you when I draw companion cells. The third one, phloem parenchyma. And the last one, fourth one, phloem fiber. So I am now drawing the phloem whose function is transport of food. So we begin now. So this then is the central channel. Why is it called phloem? Because if I draw again, if I draw the plant, this is the stem. I told you the xylem, the xylem is in the center known as pit. The outer part is the bark. So now I'm drawing the phloem in blue. You can see this then is the phloem. This then is the phloem. The phloem is towards the bark. The bark in Greek is known as flus. Flus in Greek means bark. And because the channel is towards the bark, it is known as phloem. So phloem in Greek comes from the word flus meaning bark. So the central part is the xylem. In the pit, the phloem is towards the bark, hence known as phloem from the word flus meaning bark. We now draw the phloem. The first one is the central one. The central one then is an elongated tube made up of transverse plates. These transverse plates, this plate has perforations in it. You can see I am making perforations. Therefore, like a sieve, known as sieve plate, making the first part, a tube with sieve plates, the first part is known as sieve tube. What is the function of phloem? The function of phloem is downward conduction of food from the leaves to the storage area, example root, and sometimes even upward. Therefore, the function of phloem is translocation of food. The food is always in transit, usually downwards, but sometimes even upwards. Next, the sieve tube is surrounded by cells which help the sieve tube to function. So now I am surrounding it with cells because they help, they help the sieve tube for the movement of food. When somebody helps you, you say he or she is my companion. Therefore they are known as companion cells. 
they help the sieve tube in performing the function of translocation of food by the sieve tube. Next to it, you now have large cells known as flow and parenchyma. And finally, so on both sides you can see there is flow and parenchyma. And finally, as a mechanical support, on either side there are flow and fibers. The flow and fibers, like the xylem fibers, are made up of sclerenchyma. So that takes care of the study of the conducting tissues of the plant. With this, I finished the second part of my study of plant tissue. Stay home, stay safe, stay blessed. God bless you.